Hi, everyone. My name is Omar Awan. I'm the Associate PD for the Diagnostic Radiology Residency at the University of Maryland. I want to talk today about how to ace your virtual residency interview from a PD perspective. I've done other videos on how to ace your interview, five mistakes people make, but a lot of med students have come to me and asked me, well, all the interviews are virtual, so how do you ace the virtual interview? And that's what I want to shed light on. And it's very similar, but there are some differences. I want to start by just talking about the importance of the interview and the virtual interview. It's extremely important, right? When PDs offer interviews to applicants, you're good enough to match at that program, right? So really, it's the interview that teases out who they want and who they feel will be a good fit for the culture of their program versus others. So even if you got a 230 on your USMLE and there's other people that are interviewing that have gotten a 270, you can still match at the program over the person who got a 270 if your interview is better, right? So really, you know, the interview is really the most important factor, at least for me uh, and many PDs when they're contributing to the rank order list. Because once you get an interview, once you're part of the pool of 100 or so applicants that are invited for an interview, it really comes down to how you do on your interview. Of course, they look at your school record and things like that, but that was done to offer you the interview, right? So I can't emphasize the importance of making a great impression for your virtual interview. It's really your chance to showcase who you are, why you're great, and why you would be a good fit to the program, right? So uh, the virtual interview is tough, right? Because you're not there. They can't see you in real life. You have 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes max to make an impression. So you have to make it count and you have to do the best you can. And here are some tips or virtual considerations that I think are important that may not necessarily be uh, an issue in real life. One thing is you want to make sure that you have secure internet connection. You don't want to be wasting time trying to see if you know your internet works or it doesn't. <clears throat> you want to really make sure that it's sound. The lighting should be just normal. There's no reason to get you know crazy about lighting. A normal room is fine. If you have a ring light, that's also fine. That accentuates your face or you know shows you or yourself well. But really, just any room with light. I have no ring light right now. You know, I'm in a basic room with basic light. You can see my face. That's really all that matters, right? So you don't have to get carried away with excessive lighting as long as it's enough where we can see you and we can see your face clearly. I get this question a lot about the background. Well, what should the background be? Honestly, it doesn't matter as long as it's not distracting. That's the key, right? So you want to make sure that you don't have a ton of stuff going on behind you. If it's white or just plain, that's totally cool. If you want to have a plant, that's fine, right? But the, the key is you don't want it to be distracting. If you do have something, you know, make it something that can be a focus for discussion. Or if, if someone, knows, let's say you love basketball and you have a Michael Jordan poster behind you, well, then that's fine, right? Because maybe your interviewer likes basketball and they can ask you about it, right? So, but that's not necessary. You really just want to keep it simple, keep it basic and not distracting. That's the key, right? You don't want to have a ton of crazy different colors behind you. You want the interviewer to focus on you, not your background. You're the show. Remember, you're the show, not anything external to you, right? You're the one that's going to be making the interviewer's decision as to this person's awesome. Let's rank him high, right? That's what you, that's the goal. Your volume should be good. You want to make sure that you test your microphone, make sure that people can hear you. These are all just basic common sense things, but you know, we don't have to worry about this in person, but you do have to worry about that in a virtual setting. You want to keep your camera on at all times, even after the interview. And I'm going to talk about what I mean by that. That's can be surprising to some people and you'll be surprised at how many people don't follow this basic instruction. <clears throat> you definitely want to keep your camera on for as long as you possibly can. Now, what are some considerations here? When you're actually at the interview, I want you to prepare, but don't over-prepare. And what do I mean by that? And I've talked about this a little bit in my prior interviews, but it's worth mentioning again. Of course, you want to research the program. Find out as much information you can about it. Learn about it. Don't ask questions that are already answered in on the website or on Instagram or social media, et cetera. Prepare. Make sure you have answers to some common questions. You should have answers to tell me about yourself. Why do you want to go into internal medicine? Why do you want to go into surgery? Whatever specialty it is, right? Why do you want to come to University of Pennsylvania, right? If, if that's where you're interviewing. So these are questions that you should expect to answer and you should have an answer for those questions, right? But um, and everyone should have that. Everyone should prepare those type of questions. And maybe we'll do another session on 
how to answer some of these basic questions like how to, why do you want to go to University of Maryland or why tell me about yourself etc. But there should be a balance between preparation and spontaneity. And I've made this point before because you don't want your interview to seem like you're, it's so well rehearsed and so polished because then it just seems like you spent hours, you know, preparing and I haven't learned much about you, right? Like we want to see how you act on the fly. Residency is all about adapting to new situations in different circumstances, under stress and under duress, right? So we want to be able to ask you a question that you haven't thought about, like if, you were to be a superhero, what would it be? I mean, something, you know, kind of cheesy, but we want to be able to ask you something and see how you respond to something that you didn't really think about it. And even if you have an answer to that, we'll find another question that you don't have an answer to and we'll see how you respond, right? So we want you to just kind of naturally answer questions and just be comfortable, be comfortable in that space, right? At the interview. So that's the key. So you want to prepare the basic questions, but you don't want to like spend hours preparing. I mean, just just go in, have a good time, and your attention should really just be to learn about the program, and they want to learn about you. It's a mutual thing, and you just want to be able to showcase who you are and see if you're a good fit for them, and they want to see if they're a good fit for you, right? So take it easy and don't over-prepare. Let the conversation come to you. This is a really important point, too. I can't tell you how. I've done hundreds of virtual interviews, and I can't tell you how many people just want to force the conversation, right? Don't interrupt the interviewer. Do not interrupt the interview. That's the last thing you want to do. You want the interviewer to drive the conversation. You should never really be driving the conversation. You want to feed off of their questions and their energy, right? Whatever they have to ask, you answer it and listen to them, right? This requires active listening. It really does. It requires your ability to actively listen to your interviewer, ask the questions, right? And you want to answer their questions. You know, if they ask you, why you want to go into surgery and you talk 10 minutes about why you want got into med school first and then surgery, well, you haven't answered their question, right? Like be direct, be direct and be concise and answer their question. Your goal shouldn't be to highlight your entire CV, right? You want them to come away being like, wow, I want to work with this person, right? And you get, the, even if, you know, you interview in November, December, you want them to remember in February when they're making the rank order list, wow, I loved he or she, right? And, you know, I want to rank them highly because I had a connection with them and I made a personal connection with them. That's the goal. You want to engage your interview. And this is super key because you're not there in person to engage them, right? So you have to do it virtually. So how do you engage your interviewer virtually? It's actually really easy and it takes basic common sense. Eye contact, look at your interviewer, look into the camera. I can't tell you how many times I've done a virtual interview and the person is kind of looking like this or they're looking down, they're not looking at the camera. So I feel like they're not looking at me. So if you're not looking at me, how can you engage me, right? So that's very important. And the way to do this is just practice. Like maybe set up a Zoom, inter Zoom call with your mom, your roommate, your brother, your sister, and see if you're looking into the camera and they're looking at you. Very important that you make this contact because this will allow you to make a personal connection with your interviewer. What is an interview? It's nothing other than making a personal connection with someone and engaging them, right? Smile, show your humanity, show that you're a caring, compassionate physician, right? You have 20 minutes to make an impression, smile. Use appropriate body language, use your tone for emphatic purposes. If there's something that you're interested or enthusiastic about, raise your voice a little bit or subtly, right? To show how interested you are. Uh, all these things, you know, can help engage your interviewer. And only bring positive energy. This is also super key. I, I, there's tons of people that, you know, will start explaining why they got a 210 on their USMLE step one, or why they didn't get a high pass or honors on a, in, a, in a class. There's no time for that. You have 20 minutes to make an impression. Only positive vibes, only positive energy. That's all you should be exuding during an interview because you want to really engage your interviewer as much as you possibly can. That's the key. When given the opportunity, maybe follow up one of their questions with a question. Don't do this all the time, but sometimes, right? So if you're talking about, if if he or she, if the interviewer asks you, well, what's your favorite thing to do or what's a, your favorite thing to cook? You give your answer and then maybe you can ask, well, and what do you like to cook, right? So that engages them, right? That makes them part of the conversation and that's called engagement and they're more likely to remember who you are and see you favorably by that engagement skill and tactic. At the end, the interviewer will often ask you, do you have any questions for me? 
you better have questions for the person, right? This is not an invite to stop the interview, right? This is your opportunity to ask questions, right? If you have no questions for your interviewer, how interested are you in the program, right? I mean, honestly, seriously, ask yourself that, right? So you definitely want to have one or two questions that you've already prepared that are authentic, right? Like things that you really want to know about the program that you haven't found out yet, right? So those are things that you definitely want to ask. They often get asked like, you know, well, what should I ask? Well, you know, here are some sample questions. You can ask whatever you want, but these are just some things that I've thought of. Feel free to use them uh, if you want to, but you can really make up your own, right? Like what unique opportunities are there to teach medical students, even in the preclinical years in the first and second year, right? That's something that you could ask. What type of educator or resident career development opportunities exist for residents that are in the program so that you can go out and be a great faculty member or a great person in private practice? What type of wellness activities or initiatives do residents get access to? This is a hot topic right now, right? So you want to make sure that their wellness and, you know, lack of burnout is emphasized in the program. What's the culture of the program like, right? So all these are questions that you can ask at the end to get a sense for, you know, what it is and how the program is and things that can help you stratify your own rank order list. But you definitely want to show your interest in the program by asking meaningful and thought-provoking questions at the end. You also want to pay attention to the virtual waiting room. So what happens is that after one or two or three of your interviews, you'll often be put into a waiting room. And there may be residents and program coordinators that are there talking to you. You will be surprised that a lot of applicants will turn off their cameras, zone out, do their own thing, and just wait till the next interview. You should never do that, right? That This is your time to make an impression, right? So keep your camera on and converse and talk to residents right? This is a big deal. If you don't do it, in fact, it could be a red flag, right? Because you want to keep your camera on during this time. You want to engage residents because residents often are a part of the rank order list process, right? They will give input to PDs and faculty. Oh, this person was there in the waiting room. They were talking to us. They were engaging us. They seemed like a great person. Or, you know, in the waiting room, I didn't even see this person. Their camera was off. I didn't even get to interact with them. Well, that's not going to be seen favorably by PDs, right? So you always want to pay close attention to the virtual waiting room keep your camera on and talk and talk to them. Just, just be normal, right? That's all we ask. Speak to residents. Speak, have every opportunity to learn about the program and learn from them. They're their best advocates and resources to learning about the program. Always be nice, polite, sincere, respectful to everyone, including program coordinators, right? We often get the input from program coordinators as to how the applicant acted, right? So, always be nice during the course of an interview to everyone you meet during that day, not just the people that interview you, right? It's often helpful to follow with thank you notes if they want that. Some programs will say, send you note, please don't send thank you notes. You should respect that and not send thank you notes, right? But if they don't say that, follow up with a thank you note and make sure it's personalized. Don't make the same thank you note to every single faculty member and just change their name, right? Tailor it to something that you guys spoke about, right? Or something, you know, that you thought was interesting about the conversation so that the person remembers you uh, and it'll be seen favorably. That's a great way to end the interview and to end on a good and positive note, right? So that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts about the virtual interview. It's not, it can be challenging, but honestly, just take a deep breath. You guys got this very easy, very low key. The more relaxed you are, the better you're gonna do on the interview. Thank you so much for your attention. Please let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments and wishing all of you guys best of luck and a great and a successful match. Thank you so much for your attention. Please also subscribe to our channel, the MedED page and support our mission in all this free knowledge for you guys. Thank you.